Welcome to Hoyt's Bow Hunting Whitetails. Today's the 26th of October, and Carson and I are gonna go out and do an afternoon hunt going up on one of the ridges, in fact, right behind us. Uh, you can see the ridge that we're gonna go up on. There's a spot up on top that Jordan and I hunted it way back, and it might've been opening day, if I'm not mistaken. There's plenty of does in that area, so hopefully, as a minimum, we can get a chance at a doe, but it's also a spot where last year during the rut, there was a lot of buck activity on that ridge. And it might be a, a, a place where we could catch up with something this evening. It's a little bit warmer than I'd like. It's probably mid sixties now, feels like mid sixties with the sun. I think it's like 60 degrees, very light wind, barely can feel it. So I'll bet you it lays down and I'm just gonna have thermals uh, this evening dropping down into the valleys. But as you can see, Carson's with me again. He was here three days ago, I think, on Wednesday. Uh, we went up in the, up on the ridge in the other direction. We talked about some of the bucks that he was gonna be hunting and he was all excited about getting his season going. And well, his season's already over. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it didn't barely take long. started. The very next morning, Thursday morning, he went out and shot a really nice buck. So as we take a break for the sponsors, uh, and we'll come back and you can watch Carson's hunt. And then we'll talk about it a little bit in the stand. I might have a few questions for him that would be kind of fun to get his thoughts on that hunt after the fact. And then hopefully we can put something together uh, from the ridge behind us yet this evening. Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails is brought to you by Redneck Blinds, Coat of Silence Apparel, Hunt Stand Pro Whitetail App, Whitetail Institute, Research equals results. B3 releases, XO broadheads, exact sights, muddy outdoors tree stands, stealth cam trail cameras, and Hoyt. It is the morning of October 24th. I slipped into the stand that I have the mock scrape and where I hung those sticks probably a week or so ago. Had a lot of good activity on this camera lately, a couple really nice bucks. It's a picture perfect morning. Temperatures in the low 30s. Dead calm. Super pretty out here this morning. It's really the first cold front we've had in a long time. I'm just hoping that these bucks are on their feet, maybe start to check some of these scrapes.
my goodness. First of all, I can't believe I got that on film. He came in running. Came in, checked that scrape, smelled it. I was gonna try to shoot him at that scrape. Came right down underneath my stand. I figured he was gonna come back to the right on this trail. So I moved the camera there. He stopped, got the camera back, and then I was able to draw back, grunt, stop him, shoot. That is by far the biggest deer I've ever killed. It, it can't even be eight o'clock yet. It is 7.59 and I just smoked a really big deer. I don't think he made it out at the bottom. He ran straight down, sounded like he crashed. Didn't go 100 yards. believe that. The blood trail looked really good from what I could see on the impact spot there, but Caden just called me, said he's on his way, so it's probably be the most suspenseful three hours of my entire life because after seeing that boosted my confidence that he is for surely down at the bottom of that hill so Whew. I'm so pumped I just want to call you and say that I just arrowed the biggest buck of my life seriously yep back to where it all began this morning on the trusty old e-bike. That is one thing I was a little bit nervous about this morning coming into this spot was I had to ride through this freshly cut corn field here. As you can see in my background, this is all fresh cut corn. And you can see here, this is all alfalfa. So this was kind of my experiment. Um, I rode the e-bike in with a bright light and I actually rode past deer. Um, I wish I could have got it on film, but I didn't have the ability. I was trying to carry everything. So I rode down this edge, rode past deer, and they didn't even hesitate, which was kind of a crazy thing. So just kind of keep that in mind. It's an interesting uh, tactic, I guess, moving forward is if you can ride past deer on some sort of e-bike or e-buggy or you know anything like that it elevates the game because otherwise i probably couldn't have got into that stand and been able to sit on such a perfect morning where's he at he's right over him that's oh. over right here 50 yards down now right away all right We got settled in. We had to sneak past the the uh, gatekeeper, the little button buck. It wasn't until Carson was all the way up in his stand and the buck was standing there watching him climb that he finally drifted off. <laughs> I've seen some really dumb ones over the years, and this was this one's right in there with with the top of the list. 
So let's talk about your hunt, Carson. Uh, the uh, couple things stood out to me. Uh, one was how early you went in. And, and uh, you know, there's a lot of different philosophies on that. So you were in there an hour and a half before, well, an hour before it was, was shooting time. Yeah, yeah, it was at least a solid hour. And that was one thing I questioned was if I could get into this spot clean with the two fields. And uh, I figured I would try it. And I rode the e-bike in and never bumped a deer in there. And so I was, you know, set up 45 minutes before, you know, you could even see in the woods and it was just super calm. So it was cool. Yeah. So you didn't bump anything going in? No, nope, I actually, I rode past one deer mm -hmm. and it was 15 yards from me and I just kept going. <laughs> and it never even moved, which huh. was crazy. I, I found that really interesting. Wow. It's kind of like this button buck down here. Yeah. Maybe, maybe he it was. was. Maybe it was him. <laughs> No, that's really cool. The uh, the other thing I think that probably the viewers are going to be curious about is the chaos of trying to self-film and get a shot off when the deer's moving yeah. around that much. It was it was the most chaotic one minute of my hunting career, like I told you. Um, <laughs> from the time I saw the deer coming in to the time I shot an arrow was a, right around 40 seconds, and he ran to the scrape. And I actually started to draw back when he was at the scrape. And then he ran right under my tree nine yards and I had to like adjust everything. And yeah, it was uh, hmm. it was a disaster waiting to happen. Well, you did everything well though. I mean, gosh, I would have just given up on the camera. <laughs> it was, yeah, I mean, it was close to that point. Like this deer might just run past me and then I would have been more frustrated, but it somehow worked out. Yeah, no, that's really cool. And, and uh, it's fun to see um, that kind of live action because you have the second camera running. Yeah, you know, the GoPro. Yeah, if it wouldn't been for that, we never would have appreciated all that you had to go through. <laughs> right, yeah, you wouldn't have, you know, been able to see me struggling up there, you yeah. know, in a sense, I guess. Yeah, no, that's cool. It was fun, though. It was, it was a really cool hunt. It was just a beautiful morning in the woods, and, uh, yeah, just, just a day that I'll remember for a long time. Yeah, congrats. That's your biggest buck, right? That is, yep. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so we've had back-to-back -back good hunts um, yeah we had titan with uh, his first buck with yeah. a bow, really nice yeah. deer and then you with that fast morning rut action which yeah. is really cool and your best buck ever um you know i've got a, some big shoes i've got to try to fill here <laughs> in this place but you know getting back to today's hunt when we first got into the stand the wind died and it was blowing in the wrong direction like in the opposite direction that the forecast said and now it's kicked back up again and it's blowing from the direction that it's supposed to blow from. So I don't I don't think that hurt us. You know, I think if there would have been deer close by that, you know, to and fro, light and variable type wind would have got us in trouble. But I don't think it made any difference to the outcome of this hunt as long as it stays steady now. Yeah. The worst thing you can have is that light and variable where it blows one direction for a little while and then turns around and blows the other direction. And, you know, there's no safe direction. The deer on all sides smell you. This will be, at some point, a really good rut stand. Yeah. And there's been some activity. I mean, there's bucks cruising now. I mean, people are killing bucks. You know, and it's starting to pick up. We saw that scrape on the way in. Yeah, well, and you said that Ben's neighbor shot one. Uh, uh, yeah, actually this morning. This morning, and then yeah. tightened yesterday evening, and, and uh, your action. So the bucks are starting to move. Uh, now's the time. We got some really poor weather coming with some rains, you know, soon in the forecast. But as soon as that's over, I think from Halloween on, it's going to be, you know, pretty much going to be really open. good. Yeah.
small buck chasing a doe or a doe fall, and I couldn't tell for sure what that was. It was a really small doe if it was. And then uh, 10 minutes later, a coyote right on the same path. I'm sure he wasn't tracking them because, you know, a single coyote isn't hunting a deer. But it's kind of interesting that both those, uh, the deer chase and the coyote went right through our scent stream because I've been dropping floaters and they're going right down in the perfect opposite direction of what the wind forecast had said, squirrel. And, uh, you know, so they were going right out into that little food plot. I'd say we've got about less than 30 minutes left, maybe 20 minutes. On your settings, you're getting pretty close to the end on camera yeah, light. Yeah, we're winding down now. Yeah, so we're we're getting close to the end. It, it's really, really still. And I've said it before, I've never had good hunts. Well, I shouldn't say that, I've had a few. I don't have very many good hunts on still days. I'm not going to hunt uh, for a couple days. I've got some work I need to do and uh, I'll be in my office getting that done. But I, I do think that once that weather system passes on Wednesday, it's forecast to go through on Wednesday, then uh, I'm gonna get after it pretty hard after, after that. Uh, so I'm wearing the Coat of Silence Merino Wool Fairwinds uh, jacket. And I, I know I've had a lot of people ask me about, you know, what weather temperature ranges to wear different things. And I'd say, it's probably 40s right now, wouldn't you say? Yeah, upper 40s. Yeah, it's very comfortable. Uh, so I'd say this stuff is is at least good down into the 40s. If you're curious about that, we'll get lucky and something will come through yet this evening. It's beautiful, beautiful day. This is a great spot. Uh, I'm sure the deer don't know that we're here. We snuck in pretty good. So you know, we could still have a chance in this last half hour. And if so, we'll show it to you. But if not, uh, I'm gonna say, you know, thanks for joining us. And we'll see you right back here again soon for the next episode of Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails. And remember to always dream 